Good morning and welcome to worship from Central Presbyterian Church in Anderson, South Carolina. We're glad you're all with us today. Uh, yeah, I know this isn't Central Presbyterian Church, but it finally quit raining, so I'm trying to milk every moment I can out of this beautiful day. But it's about time to get started, Lo, so let's hope this works. In addition to today being Pentecost, the birthday of the church and celebration of the gift of the Holy Spirit into the church, we have another celebration at Central today. I'd like to invite Mandy Davis to come forward and be recognized. Today represents the 13th anniversary of her working at Central Presbyterian Church as our director of music. She's done an amazing job with leading our music program and with planning worship each week. And during this unusual time when we've moved to online worship, she has led the way in, in uh, leading us how, how to do worship in this new era. So, Mandy, we thank you for your wonderful service to our church. Next Sunday, we'll begin a summer adult education series, which will also be done online. The topic will be Minor Prophets major voices and a variety of leaders will lead those each week sessions will be done virtually and be posted on the church website and the youtube channel so this week watch your email for further information about times and weekly topics and how to access those contact noel reed if you have questions and now let us worship god When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya be belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the 
moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved you that are Israelites listen to what I have to say Jesus of Nazareth a man attested to you by God with deeds of power wonders and signs that God did through him among you as you yourselves know this man handed over to you According to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. Please join me in the call to worship. Wind of God, blow far from us. All dark despair, all deep distress, all groundless fears, all sinful desires, all Satan's snares, all false values, all selfish wishes, all wasteful worries. Blow into us your holy presence, your living love, your healing touch, your splendid courage, your mighty strength, your perfect peace, your caring concern, your divine grace, your boundless joy. Wind of God, blow strong, blow fresh, blow now. Our opening hymn today is Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness.
wind and fire. Picture wind whipping fire, the roar and the flame. Picture gathering together and a sound of a great wind rushing upon us, drowning our songs, silencing our prayers. The rush of a mighty wind, the power of the spirit. Perhaps before we pray, come Holy Spirit. Perhaps before we pray, set us on fire. Perhaps we should, trembling, bow the head and pray, strength, Lord, courage, Lord, endurance, Lord, trust, Lord. And then, at last, as the roaring rises about us, pray, come. Gracious God, who pours out freely the gift of your Holy Spirit, we confess before you and to each other that we have failed to recognize this most precious gift. We have been satisfied with ordinary things, suspicious of unfamiliar things, and blind to spiritual things. Cleanse us, O God, with your celestial fire. Burn away our presumptuous self-sufficiency and open us in faith to receive the renewing touch of your hand. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Christian Pentecost is a festival of first fruits, the first fruits of the promised Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I am going away and I am coming to you. The sign of God's continuing presence, God's dwelling among mortals in the inspired lives of those transformed by the fire of the spirit. Fire cleanses, fire destroys, fire changes, fire ascends, fire transfigures, fire transforms. Those who love God become the dwelling place of God, not just in the first century but in the 21st, not just in Galilee, but in the new world, not just for white robed martyrs, but for us. Good morning, Central Press family. Today is another special day here at our church. Today we stop and honor the fifth graders and all they've accomplished in the Acolyte program. I hope you enjoy what we've put together. I'm Audrey Glenn, and I go to Midway Elementary. Very good. Nice job. And how long have you been an acolyte at Central Press? Three years. Three years. So all three years. All right. Of the pins that you earned, can you think back and tell me which one was the hardest one to get? Um... I think it was the Apostles' Creed because that's probably the longest one. Yes, I have. yes, that one is pretty long, and you earned that one. I think so. Yeah, I think you did. That's awesome. Did. What's the thing that you think you enjoyed the most, or what you're going to remember the most about being an acolyte? Um, probably like earning pins with my friends and like getting to do that kind of thing with them and like being involved with them at church. 
Congratulations, fifth grade acolytes. I am so proud of you. I wish you the best of luck as you head on to middle school and join the youth group. Have a great summer. Brooklyn Huckins and I go to Midway. Very good, nice job. And how long have you been an acolyte at Central Press? Since second grade. Oh, awesome. Well, you've done the program all the way through. Very good. Now I know I was just congratulating you because you have earned a lot of pins. Can you remember what pin was the hardest to earn? Probably the Ten Commandments. Yes, I would say. I, I noticed that you, you're you actually the only fifth grader that has that in Brooklyn, so congratulations on that. What is one thing you enjoy the most about being an acolyte? Uh, probably spending time with my friends. Exactly. It's awesome fellowship time, isn't it? My name is Wild Small, and I go to Calhoun Academy of the Arts. Awesome, very good. And how long have you been an acolyte at Central Presbyterian? Three years. Three years, so since the third grade. All right, very good. What pin was the hardest one for you to earn? The Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer, very good. Do you still remember the Lord's Prayer? Yes. Well, awesome. Very good. And it was in, it's in your, what Miss Amy called the God toolbox, I think. It's in your toolbox now forever. That's awesome that you still remember it. Okay. What is one thing you enjoyed about being an acolyte? Well, the most thing I enjoy about being an acolyte is when you walk down the aisles of the church, you get to show how hard you work to get all the pins you got. That's very true. What an awesome response there. That was very good. Hi, Acolytes. I wanted to give a special shout out to our fifth graders who are finishing their time with Acolytes. I first want to say thank you for spending your time with us on Wednesdays. I've really enjoyed getting to know each one of you through our activities, lessons, and small groups. You are a very special Part of this church and I'm excited to watch you to continue to grow within our church family and share your talents with our church. I hope you have a great summer and hope to see you soon. Bye. Well my full name is Olivia Grace Lutz and I we both go to Spearman. And my full name is William Spain Lutz and yeah I go to Spearman. Awesome very good nice job and how long have you been an acolyte at Central Press? for three years. Yeah, three years. Three years since the third grade? Yeah. yeah. Awesome, very good. All right, we'll take this next question one at a time. Olivia, I think I'll start with you, if you don't mind. If you think back, I know you earned several pins while you were an acolyte. Which one would you say was the hardest to earn? Um, I think it'd have to be the ones where you'd have to memorize um, a Bible verse. Oh, yeah. Sometimes they were like, yeah, sure, huh? they were pretty long, and so you'd have to memorize every single word. So yeah, that was, that was probably the hardest one. Yeah, those definitely were pretty difficult. What about you, William? Which one would you say was pretty hard? Mm, the Apostles' Creed was pretty hard because it was pretty long. Yes, the Apostles' Creed is pretty long. I had someone else tell me the Apostles' Creed too. William, I think this time I'll start with you. I want you to tell me one thing you really enjoyed about being an acolyte. Well, I enjoyed um, having somewhere to go with my church friends, you know, having something to, you know, do with them and getting to do the activities. Awesome. Great answer. What about you, Olivia? What's one thing you enjoyed about being an acolyte? I really like to do the um, candles up at the front. Oh yeah. Cause that, cause that was like the thing that we were learning the most in there about like how to do it properly. And like, it, I just thought that, that that was pretty fun. Hello, fifth grade acolyte friends. I miss you, I love you and congratulations. It has been wonderful getting to know you all better on Wednesdays. 
and thank you for all your hard work and dedication as you've learned about our church and our Presbyterian heritage. Thank you for your hard work and dedication for Central Presbyterian Church. You have shown your light in our church and I look forward to seeing you take your light out into the world and the amazing things you're going to do. Congratulations. Let me just say CJ. CJ Baker. <laughs> and and what school do you go to? Townville. Townville Elementary. Very good. Nice job. And how long have you been an acolyte at Central Press? All three years. All three years. Excellent. Very good. Nice job. Now, I know for your three years as an acolyte, you earned lots of pins for, for all your hard work. Which one would you say was the hardest one to earn? Mm. Can you remember? I don't know. What, what, wasn't there one where you memorized the, um, what was the long thing that you memorized? Um, the Apostles' Creed? Yeah. Was that, or the Lord's Prayer? What was the one that we worked so hard on last summer? Apostles. The Apostles' Creed, I think, yeah. Apostles' Creed. Mm -hmm. I've had yeah. several kids say the Apostles' yeah. Creed. Mm -hmm. All right, last question. If you think back, CJ, on all your time as an acolyte, what would you say is the thing that you most enjoy? <laughs> Um, I just like doing stuff and crafts. Oh yes, the crafts and that and that kind of thing that you got to do on Wednesdays. Yeah. Will do I have to do William or just Will? Yeah, just Will. Yeah, Will Mayfield, Calhoun Academy of the Arts. Awesome. Very good. And how long have you been an acolyte at Central Press? Three years. All right. So all three years, third, fourth, and fifth grade. Yep. You were there. That's awesome. All right, now you did earn several pins, so that's awesome while you were a part of the program. If you think back, which one do you think was the hardest to earn? Probably the choir one, because I had to be there the longest. Oh, yeah. What did you enjoy the most? Hanging out with my friends. Yeah, being with your friends. I am Camille Murray Anderson, and I go to Spearman Elementary from home right now. Oh, yeah, that's true, you do. Very good, nice job. How long, I think you're one of our newer fifth grade acolytes. How long have you been an acolyte here at Central Press? Oh, I started in the fifth grade, never mind. One year, okay. one year. But when you think about all of the pens that you earned, which one would you say was the hardest one to get? Probably me trying to recite the doxology from memory after looking it over because I had a brain fart like, okay, you need this pin, you need this pin. Oh wait, what was I doing? My name is Katherine Jasquich and I go to Midway. Awesome, thank you, very good. And how long have you been an acolyte at Central Press? Um, three years. All three years, very good, nice job. When you think back over everything you did as an acolyte, what is one thing you enjoyed about being an acolyte? With my friends Audrey in Brooklyn and Olivia, being with them. You like being with your friends? Yeah. Awesome, very good, nice job. Hey guys, I'm so excited to be on here and wish you all the best as you move up to PYC. I am so incredibly proud of um, each of you and it's been amazing to watch you all grow up in this church I know God has great things planned for you and he will be with you every step of the way and so will your church family we love you and amen you ready yeah. amen 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 amen, amen. 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 Love amen. You. prayer for illumination.
Lord of heaven and earth, pour out on us the abundant gifts of your Holy Spirit. May the work begun by the Spirit on the day of Pentecost continue in us as we hear your word and do your will. Amen. Our New Testament reading today is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 26. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. I think we've all learned more about infectious diseases in the past couple of months than we had learned in the whole rest of our lives combined. One of the biggest things I've learned is that infectious diseases are a lot like life itself. There's a whole lot more that we don't know than that we do know. We don't know exactly how it started. We don't know with certainty all the ways in which it might spread. We don't know really how to cure it or how to prevent it. We don't know why so many people who get it have no symptoms at all and some become deathly ill. We don't know if it will gradually fade away or if it will come roaring back. The original assumption that children were not susceptible is now in doubt. There are lots of strongly held opinions about all of these questions and we do have good people working hard to come up with solutions. I do know that we've all paid a lot more attention to signs within ourselves and our families and those we're around. Oh no, a sneeze. Are you okay? Is my 
cough allergy related or does it mean I'm coming down with COVID-19? My toe looks a little reddish. Pull up a picture on Google of, of COVID toe and see if that's what I've got. Oh no, I've got a headache today. Well, today as we celebrate Pentecost, I want to invite all of us to shift away from trying to look for those kinds of signs to looking for signs as to whether or not we have been infected by the Holy Spirit. On Pentecost, we remember the gift of the Holy Spirit being given to the followers of Jesus. The last few Sundays, we've been looking at stories about how the Spirit equipped and inspired those believers to begin the growth of the Christian church around the world. The Spirit did not originate on Pentecost. It was at work throughout creation and through the whole Bible, but this was a new manifestation of it. And the Spirit did not disappear after the Bible was written. It continues to be active in the world and in our lives today. So what are the signs of being infected with the Holy Spirit? Some people think that it has to mean speaking in tongues ecstatic dancing and shouting and waving of hands in church. Some think it means being called to a Christian vocation as a pastor or educator or musician or missionary. And all of those things can certainly be evidence of the work of the Holy Spirit. But Paul writes about a way in which we can each examine our own lives and the lives of others to determine if we have been infected by the Holy Spirit. He says these are the symptoms that you'll see when a person's been infected by the Spirit. You'll see love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's a list that's really important for all of us right now. Watching and reading the news lately makes very clear that people are on edge, frustrated, angry with each other, even violent. There are people who are angry because churches are reopening, and there are people who are angry about churches not reopening. Racial tensions are rearing their heads in a very ugly way. Political extremism and animosity never seems to take a break, even at a time when Americans need to be on the same side for a change. We're called to be better than that. We can't make everyone else conform to us, but we can resist being conformed to everyone else. Paul said, do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So let's look at these fruits of the Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday and imagine how we can bear these fruits in our daily lives during these trying times. I'm going to divide the list into two groups. The first group is, it's, there's a group of three, it's the really Big three gifts of the Spirit, love, joy, and peace. These are large categories of the orientation of one's life. The other six are more specific ways of acting. Love, joy, and peace are attested time and time again in the Bible and in that order of importance. There are around a thousand references to love in the Bible, 200 references to joy, 100 references to peace. The old camp song refers to these three characteristics. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus down in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. And what's the result of that? I'm so happy. So very happy. Both Testaments put love at the top of the list as the number one fruit of the life of faith. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your body, with all your soul, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. These are the two great commandments, and Jesus said that all of the other laws are derived from these two. 
He said that even pagans love people that love them. So his call to his disciples was to love our enemies as well. He said to his disciples, this is my commandment to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus did just that, though not only for his friends, but for the sins of the whole world. Paul said, don't owe anybody anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection and outdo one another in showing honor. And he said, clothe yourselves with love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And that just scratches the surface of what the Bible has to say about love, but some really important stuff there. The second fruit of the Spirit is joy. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, the psalmist said. Jesus said, I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Paul made clear that the circumstances of your life do not dictate whether or not you can be joyful. He wrote a letter from prison to his friends in Philippi, which is called the joyful letter because it talks so much about joy and expresses joy so much. In it, he wrote, even if, even if I am being poured out as a libation over the sacrifice and offering of your faith, still I am glad and rejoice with you all, and in the same way you also must be glad and rejoice with me. And he said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. James writes, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. And 1 Peter, in speaking about the promises of Christ, says, In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. It's quite interesting, maybe you've noticed, how often the words joy and rejoice appear in scriptures that are tied to suffering and hardships, a point which should certainly not be lost on us in our current struggles. The third of the big three fruits of the Spirit is peace. The Hebrew word is shalom, and it means far more than just the absence of conflict. It means wholeness, well-being, completeness. One of the titles of Jesus in the Bible is Prince of Peace. He told his disciples, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives, so let not your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Paul wrote, if it's possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with everyone. Colossians says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. In Philippians, Paul writes, Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Love, joy, and peace, primary fruits of the Spirit. 
honestly now, would you rather be around someone whose life is characterized by love or someone who tends to dislike, mistreat, and dishonor other people? Would you like to be around someone whose life is characterized by joy or someone who's always finding the worst in situations and in people, complaining that they got the short end of the stick, negative and depressed about everything? Would you rather be with someone whose life is characterized by peace or someone who's always surrounded by turmoil, by crisis, by conflict, by dissatisfaction? Well, if those are the characteristics of people we'd like to be around, then surely they ought to be characteristics that we want our own lives to show as well. On to the second list, where we find patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. First is patience. In the parable of the sower and the seed, Jesus says that the seeds which fell on the good soil are the ones who, when they hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patient endurance. Paul exhorts Timothy to proclaim the message, to be persistent whether the time is favorable or not, to convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. Hebrews says, we want each one of you to show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end so that you may not become sluggish but will become imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. We're reminded that God is infinitely patient with us and are encouraged to cultivate the gift of patience with others in our own lives. The opposite characteristic, of course, is impatience, short-tempered, dismissive. Patience is closely related to forgiveness. Kindness is the next characteristic, and its opposite is meanness. God's loving kindness is frequently spoken of in Scripture, and it's the model for how we are supposed to treat each other. Generosity is the opposite of stingy or greedy. Instead of wanting to hoard or withhold, the generous spirit finds joy in letting go and giving. It's not just a term dealing with money and with stuff, though it is that. We can also be generous with our time, with our praise, with our affirmation, with our talents. Faithfulness is the quality that builds trust in relationships. Can I be counted on to do what I say I'm going to do? Am I dependable? And one act of unfaithfulness can undermine years of acts of faithfulness because it knocks the foundation out of a relationship. Do the people that matter in your life know that you love them fully and completely and unconditionally, that you'll always be there for them, that you'll keep your promises? We know that God is faithful to every promise. The next characteristic is gentleness. The opposite of that is violence? How do you react when you get angry, when you're disappointed, when you're hurt? Do you want to hit? Do you want to shout? Do you want to scream or slam doors or screech the tires as you leave? Or are you able to respond in gentleness and with the last fruit of the spirit which is listed, which is self-control? Self-control is one of our biggest challenges to attain, and it's one of our biggest allies when we do, because it allows us to hold ourselves in check when we get close to a line, when our temper is getting out of check, or when we're tempted to cross a line for personal gain. It's unfortunate that when we turn on the news, it's rare that any of these fruits of the Spirit are on display. We see anger, violence, jealousy, divisiveness, slander, and much more. We're called not to be conformed to that, but to be transformed. And the good news is that all of the fruits of the Spirit really lead us to a happier, more contented life. 
it's not a punishment. So there's every good reason to want to allow God to infect us with the Holy Spirit. I want to close with two summary passages. The first is from 2 Peter. It says that the, the divine power of Jesus Christ has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Thus he has given us his precious and very great promises so that through them we may escape from the corruption that is in the world and become participants of the divine nature. For that very reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness, your goodness with knowledge, your knowledge with self-control, your self-control with endurance, your endurance with godliness, your godliness with mutual affection, and your mutual affection with love. For if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The second is a more familiar passage from Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Let it be so among us. As we respond to God's call to us through scripture, I invite you to join me in the affirmation of faith for this morning, which is the Apostles' Creed. Together, let us say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With love, joy, and peace in our hearts, let us together pray. Holy God, breath of life, send your spirit of fire to reign upon us awaken us and to amaze us. Enliven our spirits and stir our prayers to new depths of trust and honesty and fervor. You who are our God, our past, our present, and our future, blow out untruths and insecurities and, un and uncertainties and injustices, so that we might breathe in newness of life. Help us understand that even this very day, you empower us in mysterious ways to be your holy church in a chaotic and uncertain world. 
holy God, we live in a world of clamoring cultures, perspectives, religions. We live in a world of mangled politics and power, of poverty and pretense. Yet your spirit of mercy breaks through and reminds us that each human being is precious to you. So on this day, we seek your blessing for those who are alone and without community, as well as for those who feel alone, even in the midst of community. We pray that even in the midst of weighty decisions, economic crises, illness, secrets, grief, uncertainty, and fear, that you will grant peace in the hearts of all your people and all communities. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his gathered disciples to pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As a sign of our rebirth in the spirit, let us offer back to God our time, our talents, and our financial blessings for God's sake and for God's glory. On the screen, you will see ways that you can offer financially, but also may the spirit move in your heart to discern how you can give back of yourself in this world and to your, your family, your house, and your church. Let us worship God with our tithes and our offerings. your church may come alive in the spirit. May these gifts and the way we live our lives each day proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 308, O God in whom all life
I encourage you to live your life in peace, live in the power of the Holy Spirit, praying that God's Spirit will dwell in you and will be manifested through you in others. Pray that you allow God to strengthen you and give you courage and faith, peace which passes all understanding. Now may the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from the other. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.